I love the Zoom H4n, but I hate that it takes forever to turn on. Hello, welcome or welcome back. Today I want to answer some frequently asked questions about training a service dog, because that's something I'm doing. Cool! So in no particular order, I'm just gonna answer a few questions that I get on an almost daily basis about my Sadie girl. The most common question that I get asked daily is, oh, do you train them? You know, that kind of makes sense. I'm walking around with a dog that has patches and leash wraps and stuff that say in training. It's reasonable to assume that I am a service dog trainer. The way that I answer the question about whether I train them for a living is, no, I'm just training this one for myself. And usually people will be like, oh, you can do that? And then I explain, yes, it's called owner training, and it's where I work by myself with sometimes the help of a trainer and the internet um, to train this dog for my specific needs. And then we'll do the public access test and yada, yada, yada. In Alberta, you have to take the test and become certified. Um, they give you a government-issued ID card which I think is really neat. But yeah, I don't train them for a living, I'm just training this one for myself. Another question that I get asked all the time is, so how does it work? Do you still get to see the dog once it goes to its new family? These are the people that assume I'm training Sadie for someone else. My answer varies um, depending on the mood that I'm in, but usually it's, oh no, I'm training her for me so I don't have to miss her because she's not going anywhere. Another question that I get asked all the time is, you can have a service dog for that? If you don't follow my channel, if you're just here for this video, I have complex PTSD, so I'm training my service dog and training Sadie to help me with that. The answer is yes, I can have a service dog for that. PTSD is legally recognized as a disability, and rightfully so, because it is, because it is hugely disabling, depending on the severity of it in it's every case is different but for me it a hundred percent prevents me from doing my job sometimes and it prevents me from living my life <laughs> like i don't like leaving the house by myself i don't like being in the house by myself and by don't like i mean it causes me a lot of distress i have panic attacks and flashbacks and dissociative episodes which uh can be pretty dangerous depending on where you are and when it happens, don't you bark. Thanks, Marco. So yeah, the way that a service dog can help you with a psychiatric disability like PTSD is they can perform deep pressure therapy, which acts like a weighted blanket or a hug. The dog can lay across your lap or across your chest. I'm training Sadie to do both. Something that really works for me is having pressure on certain points on my shoulders, so I've trained her to do something that I call pause up hug. She's sitting right beside me and I don't want her to do it, so I'm saying it in a very different tone than I usually do. People that I work with have experienced her hugs before and I think they can confirm that it's so great. She wraps her paws around the back of your neck and just like pushes down. And this is something that she did naturally when she was a puppy. I'm so glad she did it because I didn't have to teach it to her really. I just rewarded her every time she did it and I'd be like, yes, puzz up hug. And uh, really enforce like, yes, this is a good thing that you're doing. Eventually attaching the command to it. And now I pat my chest and say, pause up hug. And she'll come give me a hug and it's great. Um, sometimes there's certain mannerisms that I have trained slash am training her to alert to. When I pick at my fingers a lot, that usually means that I'm getting pretty anxious when I pull on my thumbs like that. Sometimes it's just to make them crack. Sometimes it's because I have all this nervous energy that I don't know what to do with and I can't put it anywhere. I don't always realize that I'm doing it. So I've trained her to paw at me when she notices that. Um, well, we're still working on it. But another one is I bounce my leg when I'm starting to get really uncomfortable, when I, I've noticed that when, <laughs> I've noticed that when I notice it, it's usually in a situation where I feel trapped and like I need to leave. <laughs> it's the flight part of fight, flight, or freeze, but I don't always notice that I'm doing it. So I've trained her to pick up on when I start shaking my leg. She paws at me 
and if I ignore her, because <laughs> nobody's perfect, sometimes I don't notice. Why is there so much hair on my nose? She'll jump up on my leg and physically stop me from doing it. When I'm sitting down, she just kind of naturally goes into deep pressure therapy, and uh, when I'm standing up, she just jumps and like puts her paw up on my thigh. I wanted, I, I was, uh, maybe? I've been thinking about training her to bring medication to me, but I don't think we're there yet because uh, she loves to play fetch, but she brings the stick halfway back <laughs> and then just abandons the idea. I can get my own medication for now. I'm gonna maybe hold off on training that for a while. Another thing that she does for me too is when I wake up in the morning, she annoys the crap out of me, usually, until I get out of bed. It's awesome, until she punches you in the face with her little paws. Another question that I get a lot is, where did you get her vest? And my answer is, fabric land. <laughs> so here is her vest. Um, it's covered in dog hair right now, but it's just this cape style thing that has a strap attached to it. It used to just be Velcro, so I could adjust the size. And then I live in Calgary, Alberta, which if you're not from around here, you may not know that it gets very cold over the winter. Yeah, it was just like stick on Velcro <laughs> that was fine. But then one day the strap just decided to fall off <laughs> while we were out because the glue froze. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Um, but yeah, I sewed this myself, as you can tell from the fact that I have had to use safety pins to keep one side on. But really, I want to hold off until she's big enough, until she's big enough, until she's done growing to actually buy her like a heavy duty, well-made vest. So I just made this one myself. There's a couple of D rings on it for if I wanna have her bowl, like water dish attached to her. There's a poop bag dispenser here. I'm gonna be replacing those with uh, what's it called? Compostable ones that I'll show you in a minute. Just sewed together a bunch of strips of Velcro so that I could just like put patches wherever the heck I want on here. These two I got off of Etsy. I think actually these four I got off of Etsy. Um, these two are Patience and Love and I love them. <laughs> this one I made myself as you can probably tell. When I'm really anxious or depressed I Sorry if that's sad, but it's just a fact. I cross-stitch a lot, so I have made many, many of these. Uh, yeah, this is just cross-stitched and stuck onto a piece of Velcro. It says, working dog, do not pet. And then I have another one that I made across the front that says, do not distract, which many people ignore. I have an in-training uh, wrap around her harness, but I can't find her harness. I lose things a lot. There is this do not pet that I got at, uh, I don't know, whatever pet store. I think it was Petland actually. And then I have this in training do not approach leash wrap that unbuttons and it's great and lovely and I love it. And I got it from Patience and Love. That's like my favorite Etsy shop at the moment, I think. Oh, also tied for favorite Etsy shop. I got this convertible leash from, hang on, there's so much crap on it right now. I'm all over the place. I got this collapsible bowl that I use for her food when we're at work, and sometimes I fill it with water. I got this from Superstore for $4. Okay, carrying on. I got this amazing convertible leash from an Etsy shop called Silver Linings Dogs. They're based out of uh, that place, Lethbridge, Alberta. So it's kind of a local company. Because I live in Calgary, she hand delivered both of them. I got this one most recently and before I got this blue teal one and I love them. They're made so well and I love the, just like, I don't know, I love these. It just gives it like, is rustic the right word? Handmade and beautiful and uh, I clip Sadie's tags onto one of the rings because I can hold it in my hand. If you don't know <laughs> already, I work in film as a makeup artist. You have to be like 100% quiet while we're rolling. So if I leave these attached to her collar and she shakes during a take, then it'll be noisy. And here <laughs> is one of my favorite items that I have. It says back off. It's a leash wrap yet again from Patience and Love. I don't know if that's gonna focus. I've had people ask me a few times now, is that a guard dog? Is that your watchdog? I'm like, no, this sign is for you not to touch her. <laughs> but yeah, those are the things that we use on a daily basis that 
I've gathered from Etsy and made myself. Um, that was a very long-winded <laughs> response to that question. But I want to talk about the compostable poop bags. Um, the next shoot that I'm working on, um, it's called Summer's Monster. I'll leave a link down below to where you can find it and maybe a link up here to the pilot episode that we shot. Was it over the winter or last year? I don't know, previously. The company that is creating this web series is called Varescent Cinema and it is run by my friend Siobhan who is really into sustainability and eco-friendly stuff. So I wanted to make sure that while we're on set at the very least we have compostable poop bags so that we're not putting a bunch of plastic into the earth. And that kind of got me thinking why not do it all the time. So I went to the pet store and had these recommended to me. It is apparently a local company. Leaf? Yeah, I think it's just called Leaf. Uh, Eco-friendly compostable dog waste bags. They're unscented, but apparently they're pretty big. Actually, I'm gonna take a look. That, that is a decent sized poop bag. So that's amazing. Yeah, shop local, support local business. Woo! Why did I do that? Actually, I lied earlier about the most commonly asked question that I get every single day. It is actually, can I pet your dog? I want to say yes. I don't want to be the jerk that's like, you see this beautiful, precious angel? Can't touch her, sorry. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that guy, but the fact of the matter is, she's doing a job for me, and she's learning to do a job for me. If she learns that she's allowed to get love from everyone around her, that's gonna be bad news for me, and I'm gonna have to do what's called washing her out, which is retiring her early and having to start from scratch with a whole other dog. I'm really sorry, but you can't pet her because she's supposed to be focusing on me to pick up on the things that mean, hey, we're about to be in a bad situation health-wise, and if she's paying attention to you, that's not a good time. It's not gonna be good. All right, this has been a very long video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about service dogs or training a service dog, please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to be kind to yourself and others today, and I will see you very soon. Bye. I used to be overwhelmed by every little thing. Torn apart, unraveled at the seams. I think it rooted in the way I breathe. Mm.